So what can we do with this? All right, so we have to identify the values of A, B, and C, and they give us the value here of the multiple. So what does that tell us with respect to these points? So we have a periodic function that oscillates about a uh, exponential function. So the graph is gonna look something like this. We're gonna have an exponential function as the midline. So that's like our plus K here. Right, our midline, and then our exponential function is going to go above and below that because we're adding values to that midline. So we're going to get something like that, and it's periodic. Period is what? Let's see. Period equals two pi over that number, pi over two. So the pi's divide out. Two divided by a half is four. So we get a period of four. And right here, they're showing us one period from zero to three is a length of four. Okay, and then other things to think about, if we plug in zero here, so let's call this instead of y, let's call it f of x, and f of zero would be a times b to the zero plus c times the sine of zero, that's supposed to equal six. So the zero is an easy place to start. B to the zero is one, so that gives me A. Sine of zero is zero, and so I get right away A equals six. So this is gonna start out, right, with the exponential functions y-intercept there at six, and then it's gonna oscillate up in that exponential fashion there. And so we gotta find these other values. Uh, so we're just going to keep using those points to try and do that. So let's see, the sine function, remember, on its own, from its midline goes up, down, up again. So then this right here would be the max between the 0, x equals 0, and x equals 2. And then, let's see, midline, max, midline, this must be the min right here when we go through that. So the next midline, the next time we hit the exponential would be right here as that midline. So we just gotta kind of play around with these points to solve for those constants there. So let's try uh, one next. What does f of one give us? So f of one, now we know a is six, so let's use that times b to the one plus c times the sine of pi over two times one, and that is supposed to equal 29. And sine at pi over two is one. So this is gonna give me six B plus C times one, or just C equals 29. So we've got A, now we have a relationship between B and C. So we have two unknowns. We need another equation to solve for two unknowns. So let's just keep moving through. Switch color, how about F of two? If we plug that in, we're gonna get A is six, B to the second plus C times the sine of pi over two times two and that's supposed to equal 96. All right, pi over two times two is pi. The sine of pi is zero. So I'm gonna get six b squared equals 96. So then b squared is 96 over six. All right, what's that? Two goes into both. 2 goes into 96, what, 2 goes into 9 four times with one left over, 2 goes into 16 eight times, and then 3 goes into 48 16 times, I believe. So it looks like b squared is 16. So then b is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4. And we can't have a negative base of an exponential that leads to some really weird stuff with imaginary numbers. So it's gotta be B equals four for that one right there. And if we know B equals four, we can now find C. 
So taking that fact up here, we now get that six times four plus C equals 29. So that'd be 24. So C equals 29 minus 24, which should be five. All right, so what do we got? How are we doing? We got a value for A. We got a value for B. And we just got a value for C there. All right, so we think we have a fu function for this. We got to test it out, make sure it works. So we think we've got f of x equals a is six times four to the x <clears throat> plus five times the sine of pi over two x. There's a similar example to this in the book. You can check out also. So what happens if we plug in three here, what would we get? So check. What's f of three? It better be 379. So we're going to have six times four cubed plus five times the sine of pi over two times three. And let's see, the sine of three pi over two. So one pi over two, two pi over three pi over two, that's negative one. So that's six times four cubed five times negative one minus five, four cubed is what, like uh, 256-ish maybe? Let's check on the calculator. Desmos calculator, I think. Yep, there we go. So we had six times four raised to the third minus five is 379. Okay, so it checks out. So that is 379. That's exactly what I wanted it to be there. Uh, now, just because it checked for the last one, I could have made a mistake in between, but that check probably means all the other ones were right, but it's not a bad idea to check some of those other points and we can do that by graphing. So let's graph this and make sure we have the other three points that we didn't make some other weird mistake. All right, so we think we've got f of x equals six times four raised to the x. So that's a pretty steep exponential times five sine of pi over two x. And so if I zoom out, let's see, I'm not sure the best way to zoom out on this, probably rescale. So exponential functions, remember they flatten out on one end, right? So we just get this periodic looking function, but it does have a slight slope to it there. Um, it says y equals zero, but it's just not, it doesn't have enough decimal places to show us what's really going on. And if I change, let's see, I guess I just wanna change the height to see this. Let's see, we were going up to 379. So let's go up to like 500, oops, 500. And then we really only need to see out to like four. So let's go from maybe negative one to four. And sure, that's fine. And I mentioned before, this is our, our new value of K, our midline. So if I graph that second, Y equals six times four raised to the X, what we're gonna find is that we have this sign that waves around it and it's a pretty tight wave, right? So the amplitude of the wave is only five and out here we're around a hundred, right? So we're rising up about five vertically away from the exponential. So you can hardly see the difference between the two. Let's change this one to red. See if it looks any clearer. Oh, it's still hard to see. All right, so let's test, make sure we have the other right point. So F of one, 29. Oh, I didn't do F of zero, it should be six. Yep, and then F of two is what, 96? All right, so I do have the right point. So this has all the points I wanted. And it was just a matter of 
plugging in the X values, comparing to the Y values to try and figure out what A, B, and C were. And since we had three unknowns, we needed one, two, three equations. So that's where we learned way back in maybe intermediate or elementary algebra for solving equations.